Hello, hello. I see we are both rocking the spectacles today, Chris. It makes us look so much smarter than so I, can I feel see you better. Yeah. <laughs> can see. Hello, friends. You all made it to the new link. Everybody's scrambling to register right now is what's happening and get in. So <laughs> Isaiah, I'm gonna make you a co-host to help me if you don't mind. Sure thing. Right. Mr. Erdman, our guest is on. I see Tiffany. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. You are a special guest today, so. That is terrifying. It is terrifying, right? No. No. Actually, I'm going to reclaim the host because somebody took it away from me. Thank you very much. And I will make everybody the co-host. There we go. All right. Welcome to one of the last few growth calls of 2023, friends. Woo! I am excited for 2024 and all the things we have rocking and rolling in this region. And today we are joined by Matt Erdman. If you have not had the pleasure of meeting him, oh, not only is he just a wonderful human, he's fun to hang out with, has the best stories, but he's also super smart. So Matt, what are we talking about today? Uh, so that depends. Um... So we can do one of two things. I can go on one of my tangents um, that I'm fairly known for doing, or if there is something specific from the group that is on people's minds, an opportunity, you're trying to figure out how to capitalize, a uh, challenge, you're trying to figure out how to overcome, I'm happy to freestyle and dive into any topic that might be on somebody's mind. So you guys tell me if you want to run the show or if you just want to listen to me rant. And by the way, um, you should probably oh. tell me how long I have to do either one. Uh, you have 12 minutes. 12 minutes. <laughs> I'll give you 15. How's that? Highly unlikely, but let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> so does anybody have anything that is on their mind right now that they would love to get some input or advice around? Either achieving a goal, overcoming an obstacle, a concern, anything like that. In the industry, we, we're not here for marriage counseling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be the okay. wrong time for that. Yep. yep. I mean, I have been married for a really long time. <laughs> I feel like that's just because my wife is very tolerable. Of me, that is. If we're not off to a good start. My words are All right. We're going to talk about. What do you want to talk about? Do you have a topic? If not, I'll roll. Anybody? Going once. You got a few seconds. Three, two, one, go. Go. Right. Rant. Ready? Soapbox rant. Love it. Go. Right. So I'm going to go on my soapbox rant then. Uh, so there's a couple things that I, uh, I'll i lean into in the 12 minutes that I will probably go over on. Um, number one, it is end of the year. Um, so hopefully all of us are taking some time to pause, reflect back on our previous year, what went well, what do we want to improve on, and we're making plans for 2024. So number one, if you haven't done that, I strongly encourage you to set that side. It's a, that time aside. Um, get with a productivity coach, team leader, whoever that person is in your world um, to help you gain that focus. At the end of the day, focus and then the energy we put behind that focus has more to do with success than anything else. Experience, charisma, all those things, all of those get beat by consistency and consistency comes from having a clear focus. So if we don't have a plan, we don't have a clear focus. Without a clear focus, we can't be consistent. Without consistency, we can't hit our goals, period, end of story. Um, so number one, uh, I tend to be a total buzzkill because I like math and I like reality. So one is a reality check. Um, the word on the street is that next year could be one of the hardest years we've ever experienced in real estate. Now, that I have made that statement, I'm also going to follow it up with, you should not be afraid of that unless you're afraid of work. Because here's the deal. It sounds like a bumper sticker. Sounds like a cliche. You can call it whatever you want. At the end of the day, challenges are opportunities, period, end of story. Wherever there is a challenge, there is an opportunity to navigate that challenge and it becomes the opportunity. Right. So real quickly, if you could put in the chat for me and I'm going to open up the chat. If you were in real estate during the last real estate crash, that depending on where you lived, happened between 2006 and 2008. If you could just put yes or no in the chat. I want to get a feel for the audience. Have we been here before? I got a yes, a no, a yes, a no, a no, a yes, a no, no. All right. It's like 50-50 crowd, it looks like. No, no. 
Okay, all the yeses just talk first. Uh, maybe there's a correlation there, by the way. <laughs> all the people who said yes were the people who answered first. So there might be a correlation to the fact that the more we talk, the better we do and the longer we last in this business. Probably not a coincidence that it went down that way. That being said, for anybody who wasn't in, um, and maybe somebody who was, if you feel the need, can chime in afterwards. Uh, this is what we experienced. At that point in time, I had just taken over a market center. And what I heard from the salty dogs, by salty dogs, I mean people who had been in the industry longer than me, and they had lived through challenging times. What you would always hear is, this is where you take market share. Businesses are built in downturns. It doesn't necessarily feel good in the moment, yet it's where you get your momentum. It's where you take your market share. Those people who go into a downturn and remain focused come out on the other side with significantly more market share than they went in with. Now, I had the opportunity to experience that. I had the opportunity to experience it as an agent. And I had the opportunity to experience it as a leader and watch people respond to a shifting market. Some got distracted and looked for easy money. I don't know about you. It probably makes me sound old. I listen to music on YouTube sometimes instead of Spotify or some other thing. I've got them all. But I tend to listen to YouTube sometimes. In between every song, because I'm too cheap to pay the 10 bucks, I get irritated by somebody spinning a story about how I can make $10,000 a week without ever leaving my house and only working an hour a day. For the record, that is complete and utter nonsense. Every single one of those commercials. That's not how life works. That's not how people build businesses. That's not how we get wealthy. However, in a downturn, people start to listen to that crap and start to believe it because they are looking for an easy button. Here's the good news. That means everybody is distracted. And while they are busy being distracted by the nonsense that pops up in between songs on YouTube or wherever the hell else you get your music or your information from, those people who put their heads down go out and take their business, right? So it's actually an opportunity. It's an opportunity to learn how to do the business right. And it's an opportunity to take market share. So you should not be scared of a downturn unless you're scared of work, right? If you get out there and you have the conversations and you meet more people and you just, at the end of the day, as long as you are purposeful for the first two to three hours of your day, every single day, and that time is spent having real estate conversations with human beings, you will actually be totally fine. 100% totally fine. And you will come out the other side with a bigger business than you have today. So that's number one. Number two, um, I would encourage you to run through a little exercise. Uh, this comes from Bold. So in Bold, they, they have us write a letter to ourselves. It is a forward pacing letter, i.e. you sit down today and you write a letter as if it is New Year's Eve 2024 and you are reflecting back on your year and everything that you have accomplished. So you're literally writing how you envision your life, the way you want your life to be 12 months from now, and you're writing it as if it's real and it happened today. I would strongly encourage you to sit down and do that. Like take the time, make it as detailed as possible. What are you wearing? Where are you living? What are you driving? Like, what are your relationships like? What is your business like? Make it as clear as possible. Write that letter and put it away. Give it to a coach, give it to your PC, your team leader, whatever. Put it somewhere and then go back and read it at the end of the year. It's actually a really powerful exercise to go through. Number one, it gives you real clarity. As you write it, you actually start to feel like it's happening and like you're experiencing it, which gives you the emotion and the energy to get behind what life could feel like in 12 months when we go do what it is we need to do to make that a reality in our life. The very first bowl that was ever run, I was in as a brand new team leader. We did this exercise. Um, Two years later, after I wrote the letter, I was cleaning out my home office. I don't know if any of your home offices look like mine, but mine is neatly organized in giant piles. The neatly part is sarcasm. So I'm cleaning off my desk, and in one of those piles, I found the bold letter. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is my bold letter. And I opened it up. I read it and could not believe what I was reading. I ran upstairs, I showed it to my spouse and said, holy cow, look at this letter. She read it and said, well, this is weird. Why did you write this? And I said, no, you don't get it. I wrote it two years ago. And she went, oh, that is weird. The reason it was weird is it was a exact description of my life in that moment two years later. Everything that was written that was not actually real two years later 
was real, which I thought was tremendously powerful. And I took a couple of lessons from it. One, getting clear about what we want matters because that's what gives us the fuel when things show up hard. Number two, had I read the letter a year later, I would have accomplished some of the stuff, but not all of it. So the lesson I take from that, and by the way, that pattern has shown up repeated me and repeatedly in my life. I, I haven't hit every goal in my life, yet I've hit a lot of them. Yet I've also taken longer than I thought it would to hit some of those goals, right? So while all go goals should be timely, like we have a timeline in which we're, we intend to hit them, we also have to recognize we don't pull all the strings in life. There are some things in our control, some things in our influence, and some things completely out of our control. So sometimes the timeline moves a little. Again, had I read it in a year, some would be true, some would not. In two years, it was entirely true. So one, know that we're going into a challenging market and it's irrelevant if you're willing to work. There's two markets, the market and your market. You get to choose if you participate in the market or not. There are agents despite the market being down in most areas, 20 to 30%, who are up. I can speak specifically about some who are up in the triple digits, right? They are not participating in the market. They're participating in their market. And it all boils down to their activities. So one, if you're willing to work, it's an opportunity, not a challenge. Two, take some time. We're going into the holidays, sit down. However you choose to do it, whether it's through that exercise or some other, sit down and put on paper your vision for yourself 12 months from now in a way that you can literally emotionally attach to and keep that vision in your head as you're building your plan and working your plan. Because most of us, the, the recognition isn't going to be the motivation. Believe it or not, even the money has a limited degree of, emo of motivation. It's what the money can do for us. So if we're clear about why we're doing what we're doing, and the money is just the money we need in order to do it, you're going to push a lot harder than if the focus is strictly the money. So that's my soapbox rant. Freestyle. Questions, comments. Look at this guy, Chris. This guy's I mate. know. I got to get... She is, you know Big kudos I gotta, to I gotta clone Chris and just have him follow me around. Like every time I, I see know, he, Chris, he just makes me feel like the best better. hype man. Every time you need me, man, I'm a cheap date, baby. There you go. I love it. Yeah, he's all about Applebee's on a date night. We're cool with that. Love it. Love Questions, it. ahas. Anne put in our chat that she loves this exercise. And then I saw, if you do, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Here's the crazy thing that I love about that. Like it or not, life is a self-fulfilling prophecy, period. Good, it is. bad, or indifferent. If you're 1,000% honest with yourself, whatever our life is, mine included, good, bad, and indifferent, it's just the accumulation of a lot of small decisions to do or not do certain things. And that all adds up to the life that we're experiencing today. So it's always a self-fulfilled prophecy. The only question is whether or not we're intentional about the outcome that we're creating. Mr. Erdman, you are a wealth of knowledge, always a fountain. And we love you even with your chaos piles, because, yeah. sir, I have chaos piles as well. I love chaos. And, I love chaos. I just have to stay. He stuck to the 15 minutes. Yeah, he did. We're at 215. And that means, friends, I we get to give Mr. Erdman <laughs> a huge, huge round of applause. He gets to take a deep breath and a drink of water after that. And we're going to dig into our growth call content because we brought back the highest commented on highest rated post from 2022 for all of y'all. You excited? You don't look excited, but I'm super excited. Okay. Matt, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let me let some people in. All right. Tiffany, you ready to hit that content? Let's do it. Am I right. supposed to share? No, I got it. Okay, cool. I was going to say, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> First off, I appreciate everybody's comments, but you did not read the directions on the post where I said, please click and fill out the information for what you think this call should be called. So please, I added it right here. What should we rename 
the growth call to. Please click the post. You can enter a thousand different names. You can enter one great one, but we want your feedback because sometimes people are like, growth call, what does it even mean? We're going to grow you if you listen. All right. Last week, this or that was gingerbread versus mint. But guess what? There's a whole day. There's a whole day dedicated to gingerbread houses. For the person who loves gingerbread and eats it year round, this is heaven. Also, pro tip, heaven after the holidays, gingerbread build and destruct day because you don't have to worry about it being pretty. You can buy them on clearance. It costs you less. This is what we do in our family. We have an after holidays starting this year, build and destroy on the same day, right? Because I have caught my child nibbling on the side of her gingerbread house every day for the past week. One, disgusting. Nobody else in the house can now eat it. Two, disgusting. Three, disgusting. She's disgusting. Okay. So it is gingerbread house day, fellow architects of the festive season. Are you a master of icing mortar and gumdrop engineering, or do you prefer the express lane and buy a store-bought one? I walked out of Market Basket this week, and I saw someone with Market Basket employees helping them load about 30 gingerbread houses. I walked up and I said, are you in real estate? And the lady goes, what? Yes, I am. I said, are those pop buys for your clients? And she said, yes, they are. And I was like, hi. And she's like, how do you know that? I was like, I'm a genius. And we walked away. Then you're going to ask them bonus points for pics of the last gingerbread house they constructed or where to get a great one. I had no idea Market Basket even sold them ready to go because it would have taken a lot less crying and yelling and put it out there. Wonderful things. Tiffany, you got anything to add on this one? No, I agree. The hardest part is constructing. The best part is icing and decorating. Yeah. <sighs> There's yeah. never enough icing because half of it goes... Right down. Mm -hmm. Right, Bailey? Right, Bailey. This was the post in which agents who posted this, just how it is, add the logo and put this out there and interacted. One of our agents had 112 comments on this post. You have a chance to get really big engagement with this if you do a couple of the right things. Has every Christmas song been remade? Like how many versions of Jingle Bells are there out there? Personally, boys to men version of any Christmas song all the time. Throwing it back, okay? But ask them, which version do you like? Can you put a link? I don't think I've ever heard that version. You can get so much back and forth. Then no matter where you enjoy your music, build the playlist and then share it on your social media. Take everything everybody gives you and a couple of days before the holidays, put it out there and say, here is the one this community created. This is the Brooke the Nerd Community Christmas Playlist. Oh, it's a lot of words. Maybe I'll shorten that. BTN, I sound like a Korean boy band. That's what I'm doing. BTN, this one works. <laughs> Chris, you like that? We're going we're gonna to come up with some more music on Thursday, friend. <laughs> Do it. Do not leave out the hashtags. That is what makes the magic work. I would be the lead if I wasn't a Korean boy band, just so you know. Then we are doing this or that Thursday. Please put in the comments, and I've got a, a, something to tell you. Do you guys gift wrap or do you use gift bags? I need to know in the chat. Let's see. Wrap, wrap, wrap. Wrap is cap. I know. Isaiah, they're not there for that. They're not ready for that type of slang, friend. No cap. Bags are lazy. I feel the same way. And also I have a lot of people. So here's the thing. My husband loves to rap because he hasn't been a part of some of my kids' life for the whole 23 years that they've been alive. There's a lot of presents in 23 years to rap. But my favorite part is because he's a paramedic and he runs out of tape. It's always with medical tape. <laughs> They're the hardest presents to get into. <laughs> they have medical tape. It is so fun and he actually helps me get into the season even more because he loves to rap and he and i now go away and wrap all the gifts together we have a night we have so much fun i've been slowly doing a little bit this year i've even wrapped all the things for my mom and put them in another thing this year she's gonna hate me her little arthritic fingers are gonna go nuts 
One of the great things about, we've done this post in the past. And what was great is one of our realtors actually went out to her sphere past clients. And when they commented the week before Christmas, she dropped off wrapping paper with a roll of tape or bags with some tissue paper from the dollar store to her inner circle of people, right? You know, How many of you have been like, I just need a piece of tissue paper, but get it. Staple, staple, boom. It's like a Chinese takeout bag now. It's all yours. I've done it so many times. Staples for the win. We run out of tissue paper. We run out of bag. You're trying to put like a piece of paper from the printer so that you can stretch the wrapping paper and you flip it over and put some ribbon. Such a fun thing to do. Or next year ahead of the season after Thanksgiving, go ahead and get ahead of it and drop off a pop by before people start wrapping. Right? So much fun. Can be like, let's keep our relationship on a roll in 2025. You know, <laughs> do all these fun, fun things. You can do so much. You can do so much. Chris, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. Use the posts. The puns work. That's a wrap, right? We can do so many fun things. I used to... I used to theme all my wrapping, by the way. So like Hope would get all the Hello Kitty wrapping paper. One would get dinosaurs. One would get trucks. I don't have time for that. Now it looks like Christmas threw up in my house. It is a mom thing. We're giving you a lot of info today. Any questions on this week's posts or what you're supposed to do with it? I'm sorry. What was the Popeye for ahead of when people start wrapping? You either drop off from the dollar store based on what they've quoted the year before, a roll of wrapping paper and tape or a three pack of gift bags and tissue um, paper. Got it. Yeah. Thank so you're you. not doing the Chinese bag takeout thing like I do. Thank you. I never have tissue paper. Like that is the like, or, or that, sh don't give me the shreds. Don't give me the shreds. Don't give me glitter. Don't give me things that pop. Ugh. All right, Tiffany. We are giving away today. Do you have everybody all listed? I do, but I don't have it in my handy dandy thing that I did last time because That's okay. I'm leaving in three minutes to go to Rhode Island. Yes, um, you get to play with me, friend. Yes. And so today we are giving away, hold on, let me pull it up. We are giving away a book by one of our speakers from Family Reunion. We are giving away the five second rule by Mel Robbins. She's going to be one of our family reunion speakers. Now, here's the thing. If you have this book, chef's kiss, I'm so proud of you. What I want you to do is still accept this gift. And I want you to turn around and re-gift it to somebody you think it could change their world like it may have changed yours. So accept the gift. Don't, don't tell me if you already own the book. And then I want you to turn around and be an amazing gift giver. Put your name in it. Why you loved it. Why you love them. And give it as a gift to someone to change their world as well. We got it? Make me feel good about this, okay? All right, Tiffany, are you ready? I am. So our winner, and I'm going to butcher the last name, and I apologize in advance. Oh, this can be good. Melissa Lubuschitz. Lubusch Lubuschitz. That was very close. I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank Let me you tell so you, it took me much. six months to say it five years to spell it and I still spelled it wrong last week <laughs> congratulations so we be a thank you I'm super excited thank you thank you thank you do me a favor you have my email please send me an email saying thanks I'm a winner so that of I course. remember to thank you with Cassie and get that out to you congratulations thank right. you you're welcome congrats and remember you have to be on to win yeah. You have to be on to have these shenanigans the bad puns the dad jokes and the shenanigans and the awesome people like Matt Erdman. So look left, look right, invite a friend because this is sad how many people aren't on. But guess what? You get it. You get to put the posts out. You get all the great content, what to say, what to do, and all the bonus shenanigans to make your business better. All right. All right. We're going to, I'm going to peace out. I will see you in Rhode yeah. Island. I'll see you in Rhode Island. You're going to get there before me, by the way. Okay.
Okay, bye. So we have a special guest today for 201 Club. I am actually hanging out in KW Evolution today, teaching business planning clinic. They're on an extended break. So today we have Isaiah, who is a market center tech trainer from Maine. Isaiah, come off of mute. Say hello to your friends. Hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> hello. Are there any maniacs on the call? I, I think I saw John Eccles on here. I don't know if he's still on. 